Hello guys, I hope you're doing well. My name is Victoria and today I'm going to talk about one of my useful habits which helps me develop as an architect. Freehand drawing. As Bjarke Ingels once mentioned, architecture is a canvas for the stories of our lives. So personally I prefer to start filling this canvas with sketches. And to improve this skill and make it more enjoyable, I usually draw plein air. Plein air essentials for today are a soft comfy sleeping bag just to sit on, a sketchbook, a pencil case filled with soft pencils, rubber, box cutter, markers. Not everything on your diet must be architectural. You can find attractive details, forms, textures, materials almost everywhere. Just open your eyes and let them enjoy. My today's model is a graceful grey branch with leaves and curling tendrils. You can choose whatever you feel confident with or what inspires you. A scenery, maybe vegetables, trees or other details. It's easier to make beautiful sketches when you know fundamentals. Firstly, we have to line out overall size of the object we're about to draw, in my case, green branch. We do so to arrange pleasing and harmonious composition on paper. The best graphic hardness for sketches is from HB to 2B. Softer than 2B are bold pencils, they dull very quickly and smudge. Less than HB might scratch the paper. The best way to sharpen the pencil is to use a box cutter because it's easier to regulate the thickness rather than using mechanical pencil. Here you can see nice pointed tip. But in general, it doesn't matter what kind of tools you use, what matters is your practice and dedication. Things like how fast you draw the line and the way you put it into a stroke will change the look of it. I recommend to start and finish the line with slightly more pressure, while the middle of it will be light and weightless. That will help you to accent some details and make your sketch look active and attractive. Take your time and uh, don't forget to treat yourself with sweet, succulent persimmon. Just enjoy the moment. Now, once line work is done, we can proceed to rendering, filling our draft with shadows. You can stop where you are with line work, maybe give it more decorative look by adding patterns or whatever you like. Personally, I'm inclined to academic drawing, so I wanted to explain a couple of fundamentals which could help you to improve the understanding in light and shadow relationship. I have a cube drawn in two-point perspective. I found the center and the radius of the sphere to fit it in the cube. I can give a thorough explanation on how to draw geometric figures and perspective in another video. It will also be helpful for architectural sketches. And now I'm setting up the light in the left corner to create shadows on the object. I'm lightly drawing the core shadow line. It has a slight curve to it. This will be the darkest area of the sphere. Below the core shadow, there is a self-shadow with a reflected light from the surface it sits. Half tone is above the core shadow and is a part of a light side. I've linked the diagram with the names and tones for you to understand what I'm talking about in the right corner. The half tones are always going to be lighter than any value on the shadow side. The highlight is the lightest part where the light directly hits the object. You can use rubber to emphasize it. I'm keeping lines evenly spaced to create nice and smooth transitions. Let's call to mind why I've started drawing this sphere. Well, I just wanted to explain fundamentals of how to shadow an object which resembles a circle. In our case, it was a berry. What I'm doing now is transforming a sphere into a berry. 
Firstly, I have to add some roughness. Our berry has a little pit. To emphasize it, we should use the same shadow rules as for the circle. Reflected light, core shadow, half tones and highlight. Finishing our quick sketch with cast shadows, which will be the darkest part of our drawing. Now we possess a bundle of knowledge, so we can continue with our grey branch we've been working on lately. Every grey becomes three-dimensional as we shade it. I don't intend to make every single part of the drawing finished, because I want to avoid an overcooked look. Sometimes a pinch of slovenliness makes your work look even more attractive. Leave your traits of perfection is behind when you're sketching. Let's proceed to leaves. It's time to draw the pattern of veins. Some of them are longer and thicker, some are shorter and thinner. Then I add hatching. Actually, we can avoid drawing veins and fill it with shadows, just leaving some space where veins had to be. Now I add some thickness and contrast to the stalk. I'm quite satisfied with the overall look of this drawing and composition. Everything seems on the right place. So guys, I wanted to emphasize the overall idea of this video. Well, plein air drawing for me is an additional source of inspiration, an opportunity to practice line and compositions. A great way to discover new forms, textures and details where I'm free to try new techniques, tools, and just master sketching. Nobody's going to judge your drawings, you simply have to practice. And practice is crucial in becoming free in explaining your thoughts through drawing. It's an extremely useful skill for architects. You can find a lot of examples where architectural shapes and structures were inspired by natural world. Just remember Antonio Gaudi's Sagrada Familia. The space is evidently influenced by atmosphere forests. Who knows, maybe my next concept will resemble grape leaves or tendrils. It's always interesting to discover. Thank you guys so much for watching, I will appreciate your comments. In my next video I'm going to talk about an entourage for architectural presentations and sketches.